our attention, our service into two. Give one to self and give one to you. Yours only it shall be. Amen. We love you. We love the work. We love the service. We love the souls. We love the churches. And Lord, we want our lives to count for this single thing. When bank officials stick to that profession, most of them, they stay in the bank throughout their lives. When some people get into teaching or lecturing or engineering or working in a factory, many of them stay in that profession for a long time till the rest of their lives. But this is an eternal work. Dealing with souls of men. Dealing with their eternal destiny. And Lord will love you. You paid the whole price for us and for the people who yet have not been saved. They must be saved. They must hear the message. And Lord will pray that any time we're weary, discouraged, and it appears the opposition is too much for us, we'll pray that you'll remind us that we have told you we'll never go back from you. We'll never go back from your service. And Lord will pray that you the end of our life we'll be worshipping and preaching we'll be worshipping and counseling we'll be worshipping and doing everything that you want us to do in jesus name Amen. strengthen us Amen. give us necessary power Amen. equip us more adequately for the service in jesus name Amen. as we round up now and we leave we're living into the service. We're going so that we can do your work. And we pray that there will be a remarkable change. A definite revival. And there will be multitudes that will come to the Lord as a result of this conference we have had in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you are the God of heaven and the God of earth. The God of all provision. You know all that we need in every city where we minister. You know what we need in every local government area and in every village. Lord, after we are parted and we are not with one another, we pray that your power, your presence will still be with every one of us. Amen. There are some of us who have come from denominations where it may not be very, very easy to teach, even being born again, very, very freely. But Lord, we pray that you will give the wisdom. Amen. You will give the understanding. Amen. So that they will still exalt Jesus Christ and proclaim the gospel of salvation with your wisdom that many people will give their lives to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, at this time, we must pray for the thousands and millions in the celestial church. Thousands and millions in children and seraphim church. Lord, whenever we mention such names, we, because we're human beings, we almost shudder. Can they know the truth? Can they get into the salvation experiences? But with you all things are possible. The souls that are in those places, they are precious to you. And Jesus died for them. And therefore, Lord, we are praying, whatever you will do to help their ministers. Whatever you will do to help their leaders. So that the millions of people in those assemblies will not perish. Do it in Jesus' name. Amen. We remember the great dedication of the fathers, of the priests in the Catholic Church. That they will their lives just for your service. And they will do without even some necessary things in this life by consecration and commitment. Yet Lord will know that they need more emphasis on the Son of the Living God. They need more emphasis on the new creature message. More emphasis on the fact that only Jesus can save. 
that only the blood of Jesus will wash all our sins away. But Lord, can't you do it? You love them. You died for them. And Lord, all those ministers and priests, they're doing the best they think they can do. But Lord, how we pray that light will come from heaven. Amen. How we pray that your spirit will move Amen. even in their midst. And Lord, you will use your own way, your own people, your own agents, your own men and women. And you will lead them into salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we remember fellow Nigerians at the bad beach. Fellow Nigerians in the wilderness. Fellow Nigerians at the riverside, they are trying to call unto you, looking for the unknown God. And they will fast, they will pray, they will burn candle. If necessary, they will roll on the ground. Early in the morning, before some of us gospel people wake up, they wake up, ringing the bell, and talking to people, repent for the kingdom of God is coming. But the depth of that repentance, they may not understand. But you are God, and these are never dying souls, and these are people that will live forever. Oh Lord, we're looking up to you. We may write them off, but you cannot write them off. You are their creator, and you are their savior, and you died for them. And therefore, Lord, we pray that you will use us. You will use other children of yours, so that you can bring them to the fullness of truth in Jesus' name. Lord, we remember the Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, and many of the Orthodox churches where we grew up. Many of us learned how to read the Bible from the Anglican Church, from the Methodist Church, from the Presbyterian Church. But when we grew up, we discovered that there is a death we had not known before. And we came out and we called ourselves gospel churches. And sometimes in our foolishness, sometimes in our ignorance, we pointed with the left hand to the churches that taught us the name of Jesus for the first time. The churches that introduced us to the reading of the Bible for the first time. The churches that taught us that God is the creator of heaven and earth for the first time. And the churches that taught us to know about the existence of God. But Lord, we repent of our foolishness. We are not going to bite the fingers that fed us. Therefore, Lord, we pray in any way we can be useful. In any of these orthodox, historic churches once again. Lord, we pray you will raise up men and women that will bring revival even in those churches in Jesus' name. Lord, the established churches, evangelical and Pentecostal and historic and orthodox, we pray that your revival wind will begin to blow. Amen. That your revival fire will begin to burn. Amen. That you will raise up strong men, great men, anointed men, Amen. powerful men, Amen. in all these churches in Jesus' name. Lord, our desire is that people will be saved. Our desire is that people will know that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And it doesn't matter from which avenue. And Lord, it will be to the glory of your name if we begin to hear that multitudes in their thousands are getting saved everywhere. In a celestial church, children and seraphim church, white garment churches, prayer houses, anywhere that people are turning in their multitudes to the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be to the glory of your name. And therefore, Lord, we pray, anywhere that people gather together to read the Bible, anywhere that people gather together to call upon God through Jesus Christ, we pray that your revival will begin to come up in Jesus' name. Lord, sometimes, we have fought in ignorance against people of other religion. And yet, in eternity, just a few years from now, after we have left this world, we might be regretting that we didn't help these other people. 
And sometimes we put ourselves in one camp and they in one in the other camp. Because they called us bad names. Because they do not know Jesus Christ. Because they call God by another type of name. And because we have not been going on very well. They destroyed our churches. They did this against our buildings. They did this against our converts. Because of that, we have not manifested the love of Jesus Christ in all. In our hearts, we have been bitter. In our hearts, we have been unhappy. Because of these other people. And we said the church must stand. And anybody that will go against the church, destroy the church, let the Lord destroy that person. But Lord, we remember Saul of Tarsus. He imprisoned your children. And he was holding the clothes of the people that stoned Stephen. But when Stephen was dying, he prayed, Lord, count this, not, count this sin not against them. And he said, Lord, you must have mercy on them. He prayed for them before he breathed his last breath. And he said, Lord, receive my spirit. And it was in the next two chapters that man's soul was still breathing. Persecution, bitterness against the church of the living God. But the prayers of Stephen sent you to speak to that man. Saul, Saul. He stopped, he fell down. He became blind. And he asked you, who is that Lord? And you said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And the greatest enemy of the church, the greatest tyrant against the church, the greatest champion that has been whisking all these people into the prison, he said, what must I do, Lord? You told him to rise up. A messenger is waiting in Damascus. And you went to Ananias and you told him, go to that street called Straight. You'll find a man there. His name is Saul. And Ananias said, Lord, I've heard many things about that man. Oh, yes, but I've done what you don't expect. But I've done the impossible. But I've done what you are not even thinking that could ever happen. And he went there and he called the enemy, Brother Saul. Oh, Lord, we pray that you will convert the enemies of the church. That will change the enemies of the church. That all the people, in their sincerity, they do not know. If they knew that Jesus is the king, they will not persecute. If they knew that Jesus is the son of God, they will not persecute. If they knew that salvation is the hand of the Lord, they will not persecute. But because they do not know, that's why they persecute. Because they do not know. That's why they call Jesus a bad name. Because they do not know. That's why they are not reading the Bible. Because they do not know. That's why they, not, well, they will not come to the church. But oh Lord, you have the power to convert. You have the power to change. And therefore we pray that your power, your anointing, your spirit, the wind of revival will blow even in all those places in Jesus name. If they don't come to church, you can meet them on the way to Damascus. You can meet them in their places of worship. You can meet them in the dream. You can meet them in the day. You can meet them anywhere to convince them that Jesus is Lord. You said, if we shall agree together as touching anything, that we ask concerning your own children, concerning your own creatures, that you will answer. You said, concerning the work of my hand, command ye me. And therefore, Lord, we are coming together in agreement of faith. And we are praying the revival fire will burn. The revival wind will blow. And we are praying that even people that seem that it's impossible for them in human standard to get converted, Lord, we are praying from this very month of March, we we'll begin to hear information that these people are getting converted in Jesus' name. And Lord, when they get converted, you'll use them like you use Saul. And many people, through them, through their testimonies, will turn to the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, may we not think that it's impossible for anybody to be converted. May we not think it's impossible for you to talk to anybody. Therefore, Lord, we pray that our heart will become broadened. Our vision will become greater. And Lord, we will know 
that the gospel is for every creature. We will not be afraid, for the King of kings is going before us. The Lord of lords is with us, and greater is he that lives in us than the one that lives in the world. Nigeria is for Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray you will move. As we go out to preach without fear, without favor, with power, authority, and anointing, multitudes will return to the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray that all the churches that we represent here will experience revival, will experience growth, and many, many people will know you. And Lord, we pray that you'll anoint the hands of all the people that are here. Amen. That as hands are laid on the sick, they will recover. Amen. As words of authority come out of their mouths, O oh Lord, demons will come out in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we preach the gospel, the gospel will be effective. Amen. And as we make altar calls, people will rush to the altar and they will get converted in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we pray that no lion will stand before us. Amen. No demon will stand before us. Amen. No tyrant will be able to stand before us. As, as you were with men of old, you will be with us. Amen. And you have told us already that even when we walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. Amen. For your rod and your staff, they comfort us. And you'll pour that oil in our cup, and it will run over. Amen. And Lord, we know from now on, henceforth, goodness and mercy will follow after us. Amen. And at last, when we have fulfilled the ministry, when we have finished the course, Lord, we know a crown of righteousness will be waiting for us. Amen. I will live with you forever and forever. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Let's be seated. I'll just um, read some concluding verses to you. Because um, what can we preach to you again? We have preached everything that we know to preach. But we thank the Lord because of the fellowship we have enjoyed here for the love of God. And we thank God because we are going. And ours is a victory. And we are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to tell you this morning before you go that God himself is sending us out as watchmen over a dying generation. In every generation, people are dying. David served his own generation. After serving his own generation, then he went up to be with the Lord. He died. This is our own generation. We're going to serve this generation. But I want to tell you, that the generation is dying fast. This is the third month of the year. And this year alone, there are many people that have already died. And many are still dying. But we are the word of life. If we get to them before they die, they'll be saved and they'll get to heaven. And that will be the joy of your own life, the joy of your ministry. So please settle it in your heart that God has raised you up, a watchman, over this dying generation. In Ezekiel chapter 3, from verse 17, Ezekiel chapter 3, from verse 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, 
Hear the word at my mouth. Give them warning for me. When I say to the wicked, Thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at your hand. You know, many times we think that the people of the world, those who have not been saved, that they are wicked, they are at fault, and judgment will come upon them. That's true. But we have part of the blame to share. The Lord has called us, He has made us watchmen over our communities. He said, Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Get the word from my mouth. And then you will speak the word unto them. Whatever I say to the man that is about to die, to the man that is perishing, that is what you will give them. If you warn them and they repent, they will be saved and you will have a reward. If you do not warn them and they perish, I will require the blood at your hand but you know before this time the Lord told this man and he told him to sit down where the people were sitting down associate with them get near them sometimes we're too far away from the people and we do not know how they suffer we are not touched with the feeling of the infirmity we're not really ministers over them. We're secluded, we're separated, we're far away from them. But when you get near, then the Lord will be telling you, those are the people that I want you to be a watchman over. Hear the word, speak to them. That's your life's business. That's the first thing in your life. No other thing is to take priority. There's an illustration in the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 20. From verse 38, the prophets of the Old Testament sometimes demonstrated their messages. Like I said, God told him, demonstrate the message. Like Ezekiel, demonstrate the message. And this prophet we're looking at now, he demonstrated his message. And then he came to the king. Let's see from verse 38, 1 Kings chapter 20. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king and said, The servant went out into the midst of the battle and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself has decided it. He was made a watchman, according to his illustration, over a man that had been delivered from the battle. And he said he was giving the instruction, keep this man, watch over him. If he be missing, you'll pay for it. Then he said, as he was busy here and there, that person I was supposed to watch over, that person was gone. It was a parable that he told the king because he will discover in the following verses immediately he removed the ashes from himself and he said the message is for you. That that king that you saw at the battle should have been destroyed but you have not done what the Lord has told you to do. So you will be judged by the Lord. 
But let's leave the interpretation for that king. Let's take the interpretation for ourselves. The New Testament says, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So, how does that apply to us? He has told us that we are watchmen. And he has told us, keep these people. Maybe at present you are the only preacher, you are the only church represented in a particular village. And the Lord is saying, my servant, minister of the gospel, you see now, your church is the only church in this village, in this community, no other church. Whatever the name of the church, Anglican, Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, CAC, Assemblies of God, whatever the name, you are the only church in this village, you are the watchman over the people in this village. Keep them. But because it's a village, no pipe water, no electricity, no French, no vehicle, no amenities of the present day. You are all the time going up and down to the capital of your state. Or going to other places as you are busy here and there. Other religions and other people that will not teach the gospel. They took over. When you came back again, you couldn't win them again. As you are busy here and there, you lost that village. Maybe God has raised you up, general superintendent in a particular state, a local government area, and you have been dedicated to village evangelism. And you have established this village and this village, and every time your, your concern is that these villages are perishing. All these um, Bible school students, they pass out of Bible school. They want to be in the city. They're in Lagos. They're at Ibadan. They're in Benin City. They're in Port Harcourt. They do not go to the villages, but God raised you up. And you said, the majority of the people in Nigeria, they are still living in these villages. So if we all stay in Lagos, all stay at Ibadan, all stay in Benin City, who will we win the villages to the Lord? That's the vision God gave you originally. And you started it. And people were getting revived. Many people were getting saved. The gospel was being preached in the villages. But eventually, as you came to a conference like this, you saw your own uh, counterpart, your own colleagues. They too, they are general superintendent. But some of them are in big, big cities. They live in good apartments. They have a big vehicle. And right at the car park, you see the label and, the, and you say, ah, what's happening? Oh, they say, you know, the money is in the city. The people in the village, if they are going to give tithes and offerings, sometimes they see them, they give us tithes and offerings. Sometimes it's maize, they give as tithe and offering. I said, what? So as general superintendent, I've been suffering myself in the village, in the local government area. All right, I will shift my headquarters to the major city so that I can enjoy the amenities of this modern world, so that I can enjoy the electricity, the fridge and the freezer and everything. But you remember the original vision God gave you? You were the first person to go into those villages, riverine areas where people will not go before you open the way for other people to be coming. The vision was originally given to you. But you know, as we're not busy here and there, the people in the villages who are supposed to watch over, they are gone. You know, in this country right now, we have millions and millions of students. Secondary schools, in fact, uh, the statistics tell us that more than 40 percent of the whole of nigeria are below the age of 15. more than 40 percent of the whole of nigeria are below the age of 15. that means you have more than 40 million children below the age of 15. and those teenagers those of us who have studied child psychology will know that they are very troublesome they're very restless and those of us in the churches if you have been in charge of these children, you're teaching them, they're rebellious, they're pinching one another, they're fighting, and uh, they're saying, teacher, Sunday school teacher, this uh, boy will not allow me to listen to the Bible. And the other person, he'll run there and run there. And then you came in here and you ask, you know, your other colleagues who have also got the call of God and say, what do you do in your church? And he says, I am the song master. And I lead the choruses, and I lead the singing, and I do this, and I do that. Not only that, I sometimes go out 
uh, and I preach fiery message. And sometimes in our church, I'm given opportunity to even address the adult congregation. How about you? What do you do? Well, I am with the children. How do you like it? Well, I used to like it, but the way you are talking to me now, I don't like it again. Those children are troublesome. Oh, yes, but they have never dying souls. Wherever God has placed you, whatever he has told you to do, don't let them die. Don't let them perish. It's very, very important that you reach out to them. Son of man, I've made you a watchman over these people that God has given you. Do not be busy here and there. Busy here and there until those people are lost. We have some of our dear people, ministers of God, precious, precious people from the north. And brothers and sisters from the north, we know it's not easy. We know that in some states, you will be the only person that is preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in about five miles radius. And when you have just one convert, that convert will be denied marriage sometimes. If he has got married before, the people that gave that woman to that man, they can say, now that you say that you want to become a Christian, the wife will give you before, we're sorry, we're not giving you again. We know things can be hard. And we know that you may even lose some amenities, some opportunities. Even buying in the market and going places, even knowing the language and mixing with the people. But what do we do? You have come to the south now. We're in Lagos. And you have asked uh, our brother here from where you are. And he says, I'm from Imo State. How is it? Well, you know that Imo State is almost everybody Christian in the nominal sense. And if somebody becomes a Christian, there may be persecution, but not like in your own case. In fact, um, how many years have you been in your church in the north now? I've been there for about seven years. How large is your church? Twenty-five. Twenty-five? seven years i just started four years ago you know how many we are now we're more than 500 is that so i think i better transfer to the east no no transfer god has made you a watchman over those people the revival is coming your way Amen. already you've got the anointing you've got the power i want to tell you that those policies were more difficult they put Peter in prison. They said, no, we have commanded you not to speak in this name anymore. Peter did not seek transfer. Why are you looking for transfer? Stay where you are. The revival will meet you there. Yeah. And they put them in prison. And they said, they didn't want to hear at all. And they even brought them before the council. And while they, they were talking to them and said, didn't we tell you and strictly charged you not to talk in this name again? And he said, but we must obey God rather than men. And he began to tell them that the stone which the builders rejected is the stone that has been the chief cornerstone. They were angry. They wanted to kill them. But they told them to go aside. And God had his man in the council. His man was not born again yet, but it was his man. Gamaliel. He didn't know Jesus as Savior yet. He wasn't even sure of the message they were preaching. And Gamaliel said, listen to me. You see that Gamaliel? He was a respected historian among the council. History tells us that he had studied so much, they respected him whenever he spoke, he was authority. So he said, listen to me. Then he gave them some history that some years ago somebody rose up and he said it's one great man some people followed him but they scattered eventually then he said another one rose up he said leave these men alone because if it be of god so that we don't appear to be fighting against god if it is not of god it will not stand they said you are right <laughs> do you think they just said you are right that's the holy ghost and he called them and he beat them. Maybe you've been beaten. Maybe you've been persecuted. Yet, don't give up. And so when they were beaten, they went back to their own people. 
They prayed together again and God gave them power, more anointing. And with great boldness, they declared the word of truth. But you see those apostles, they stayed where the people were. Where the people are is where the problem is. There is no problem where there are no people. Find a wilderness, nobody there, stay there, no problem. Come back to the city where there are people, where there are people, there are problems. If you want to reach people, you have to go through a problem. But do not, because of the problem, be busy here and there. Stay where you are, and God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes we come like this to... It looks like this church, if I join this church as a minister, there will be no problem of salary. So instead of just having church aid ministries, you just say, uh, please, I want to see uh, Brother Kumoi. I came as a minister of, but now I want to live as a minister of deeper life. I want to join you. No. Where God has placed you in that denomination, it may be difficult keeping with the Lord. The Lord who has done this here, he will do it with you. If you believe all things are possible, that's the reason we're together. That's the reason we're sharing together. Not that because we say our denomination has little difficulty and the salary doesn't come in in time because of that, I will leave that place and join this one. No, don't join this one. Let's remain where we are. God has made you watchmen over the people that he has placed you over and you will succeed in Jesus' name. Manna will come from heaven if necessary. Water will come out of the rock if necessary. Honey will come out of the rock if necessary. If necessary, you will get your salary from the fish that you take from the river. Wherever you are going to get it, the Lord will send it in Jesus' name. He has chosen us. He has committed us. And he has commissioned us that this work must be done. Don't let us be busy here and there. Changing. That now as we are leaving the conference, a person in first choir will cross over to Assemblies of God. A person in the CAC will cross over to first choir. And a person in the Anglican church will cross over to the Baptist church. God has made you a watchman over the people that you are now supervising or pastoring or teaching or evangelizing. Let us do the work and God will make us successful. Look at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. From verse 20. And now I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Are you moved? Are you afraid? None of these things move me. Salary may be delayed a few days. None of these things move me. Some young people in the church may be trying to cause trouble. None of these things move me. It may appear that we do not have all the equipment yet and we have to walk some distance on our own. None of these things move me. We're still using primary school for our church uh, services. None of these things move me. And it appears that even the people, they do not know how to give. Things will change. But at present, none of these things move me. And sometimes in the villages, when we go to evangelize, these uh, Juju worshippers will use um, their evil and they'll try to cast some spells upon us. None of these things move me. When we have some converts, it's so difficult for some of those converts even to stay. None of these things move me. And it appears that in our church, there are no women at all for even the people to marry. Therefore, they are backsliding and going back to the world. None of these things move me. And sometimes, 
I fast compulsorily because there is no food to eat. None of these things move me. Let nothing move you. The God of heaven will support you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. Whatever the difficulty of today, tomorrow will be different. Whatever the restrictions of today, tomorrow will be different. Whatever we have lost in the past, tomorrow will be different. None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Let's keep on till the end. It's finishing that matters. We have started, let us finish up. We have started preaching, keep on preaching. We have started evangelizing, keep on evangelizing. And whatever area the Lord has made you a watchman, a pastor, an overseer, let us keep on doing the work. The Lord will give us all the necessary grace. Verse 28, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Take it over the congregation over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. You know, sometimes, many of us, we go to other places much more than we preach in our own church. But you know, your reward is on primarily where God has made you the pastor, the leader, the overseer. Take it over that congregation over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. You know, sometimes the preaching of the gospel has become something like salesmanship. In my congregation, maybe the people know too much about me. And they do not respect me, perhaps, as I could be respected in another place. And because of that, maybe I have to be traveling about. Because, you know, a stranger is a very good person. When you come to a new congregation, and they introduce you, and they say, this morning, we have the great privilege, the august privilege, of having this mighty man of God. God used him to establish many churches in many towns and villages, local government areas and states. And God used him in Nigeria here, in Ghana, in Kenya. Who is this person I'm talking about? I'm talking about a great man of God. God has raised up in this generation. He has preached on evangelism field. He has preached in crusade. He is pastoring in a church. Who is this man I'm talking about? He's a great father. He's a great pastor. He's a great evangelist. And he's a great man of God. Who is this man? A man that has power and authority and anointing. Let me bring out to you. It, now I'm calling on reverend so and so. And everybody will clap. And the man will say, even my church, they don't do this to me. <laughs> and because of that, he goes about... He likes that clapping. He likes that applause. But my brothers and sisters, let's do the work. Let's forget the salesmanship. Let's forget the professional part of it. And over the congregation, the Lord has made you overseers. Train those workers. Motivate those people. Evangelize that community. It's true that we can travel about. It's a great privilege. But you know, if we travel nine months out of the year, and we're only in the church for three months, what work are we doing? And you are the pastor. And you are the person that God has placed in that place that you will watch over, and you will teach. You will evangelize that community. Let us do the work. That when we travel, the traveling will not be the major part of our lives, except you are an evangelist. You know, the uh, ministry of the pastor is a resident ministry. It is the ministry of the evangelist that is a traveling ministry. The evangelist goes from this locality to that locality to that locality. But the pastor is the father in the Lord. is the great shepherd. And he's the one that is always staying with those people. We see him on Sunday morning. 
We see him during the week. When we have any problem, we know where to find him. Because he's not out of town nine months out of one year. Let's do the work. And the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Take it unto yourselves. And unto all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. Which he has purchased with his own blood. In Second Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick, the living, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure some doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from hearing the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, brothers and sisters. Preach in season and out of season. When it is convenient and when it is not convenient. You know, in our offices, I mean in the secular world, you are not allowed to miss your office work. Just because you have a little headache. You are not allowed to miss your office work. Just because you are a little bit sick. They say, well, if you are really sick, we are not convinced yet. Go to the doctor and let the doctor give you a sick leave. We want to see a certificate for the doctor to say, you are so sick. That you cannot come and teach in the school. You cannot come and work in the office. But you know, because we are pastors, and whenever we tell the church, I'm sorry, today I cannot preach, the church does not ask for the doctor's certificate. Therefore, when we have a little problem in the throat, we say, I don't think I can preach today. When we're a little bit unhappy, in the morning you are coming out of the house, and your wife did not prepare the meal in time, and you became unhappy. And then you go to the church, sitting there, you say, how can I preach now because I'm unhappy? And since the church will not ask for a doctor's certificate that you're sick, you just call another person and say, I'm not feeling all right. I can't preach today. Whatever you have, give to them. Don't let us continue like that. It must change. If you're unhappy, hide your unhappiness, preach. If you're sad, hide your sadness, preach. In season and out of season. When it is convenient and when it is not convenient. If you are planning it, you have planned it from home before. And then you have told somebody to preach, that's alright. But I'm talking about a little thing that happened. You were in the premises of the church and one of the workers insulted you. And said, um, during the week, I came to your house, I wanted to see you. And your wife said you were sleeping. I thought that you are the person, you ought to see me anytime I wanted to see you. I don't know that uh, you have become such a big pastor now that nobody can see you. Well, I will soon leave the church if that will continue. And you feel unhappy. Even though you feel unhappy, get on that pulpit, preach. In season and out of season. Because you have prepared that message. How can you call somebody who is not prepared just because you are sad? Will they excuse you if you were teaching in secondary school just because a student ins insulted you before the class? Then you say, I cannot uh, teach now. Uh, senior prefect, come and teach this class for me. Can you do that? A doctor working in the hospital. His wife did not cook uh, the meal in time that morning. Then he got to the hospital and he said, I'm not happy this morning. My wife did not treat me well. Nurse, anything you can do, operate them. If they die, that's their business. I'm not happy this morning. If the doctor cannot do it, the preacher cannot do it. If the teacher cannot do it, the preacher cannot do it. In season and out of season, preach the word. And God will give you the results in Jesus' name. Watch in all things. Endure affliction. There will be affliction. 
endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. It's work. Hard work. Make full proof of thy ministry. We're going in the power of the Lord. With the anointing of the Lord. With the backing of the Lord. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Everything you need, my God shall supply. All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Don't bend. Don't bow. Don't turn back. Don't be afraid. The same God that rescued the children of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. He has not changed. He's still alive. That God that opened the Red Sea before his people. He has not changed. He's still doing the same today. That God that trained manna 40 years in the wilderness for them. That God has not lost any of his power, any of his resources. He can do the same today. The same God that made the Jericho walls to fall down. At the shout of the people of God. That God is still alive today. The same God that glorified himself in the life of Elijah. That God is still alive today. And the God that walked with David and rescued him from the hand of Saul. That God is still alive today. The God that kept those apostles and those prophets and those evangelists and those pastors and teachers of the New Testament. That God is still alive today. The God who is still walking. Who says in the last day, and these are the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. That God is still alive today. What do you need? All things whatsoever. You ask in prayer, believing, you'll receive. What's the need? Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Do you need wisdom? If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. Who giveth unto all men liberally and upbraideth not. But let him ask in faith. Nothing will bring. Whatever we need, the Lord will supply. The Lord will go before us. The Lord will go with us. And the Lord will be following up on us. As the people went out, he walked with them. Confirming the word with signs following. And our prayer is as we go out, the Lord will confirm everything that comes out of our mouth with signs following. Let's rise up and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we thank you very much for this morning. We thank you for the timely message you are giving to us. We know that as your children, as your ministers, as your ambassadors in this world, you have an expected end for us. The thoughts you have concerning us are not for evil, but thoughts of good. To give us, to bring us to an expected end. Lord, you have spoken to us this morning. You have reminded us of the generation in which we live. And you are reminding us of the communities in which we minister and dwelling. Father, all that you have spoken to us, we pray that you will help us to be what you want us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that by the blood of Jesus and in the mighty name of Jesus, we are conquerors. Amen. Because we are co-laborers with you together in your vineyard. Father, we are asking that all that you have promised us, all that you have committed into our hands, Lord, we will use it to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are asking that we will not disappoint you and fail you in Jesus' name. Amen. As evangelists, your anointing will go with us and that will do express for you in Jesus' name. Amen. As pastors, we are going to be pastors indeed, and that will care for our congregations in Jesus' name. Amen. Where we have failed before, we will never remember the failures. But that all that you have shown to us, we will do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. We pray that your anointing will go with us. 
Your power will go with us. Amen. Your wisdom will go with us. Amen. And the understanding that we need to do this work so that this country will be taken over for Christ, that sinners will be converted, that the kingdom of the devil will be demolished, that the kingdom of, the, the, of, the, of our dear Lord will be enlarged, will be done in our generation in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for answering us. Thank you for your goodness. Father, we are praying that as we go home, your protection will be over us. Amen. As people see us, they will know that we have been to the high mountain, that we have been with the Lord, Amen. and that there will be a great difference in our administration in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, on the way, in the buses, in the cars, in the trains, by air as we travel, we pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will cover us in Jesus' name. Amen. You, your protection will go over us. Amen. Your blessings will follow us. Amen. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.